there is a big genetic component to ALS. Um, so, you know, roughly somewhere between 5 and 10% of patients will uh, report a family history. Someone else in their family has had the condition. Um, but even without a family history, if you check for all the known genes, and there are more than 30 of them now, um, quite a proportion, at least 20%, will will have a gene that predisposes them to developing MND. Um, I think that there is a childhood form of motor neuron disease called spinal muscular atrophy, or SMA, uh, and that really, you know, blazed a trail for um, showing that motor neuron degenerative disorders are treatable if you get the right treatment. So in SMA, there is a deficiency of uh, a protein called the survival motor neuron protein. And genetic gene therapy was used to show that if you boost the level of that SMN protein, you make a remarkable difference to the course of that disease. In its most severe form, uh, it, it causes babies to die within the first two years of life. And with a single um, gene therapy injection, um, you know, they were toddlers of three or four running around. I have a lovely video of a a little girl with type 1 SMA dancing with her neurologist when she went to a clinic visit. So I think that really what was an exciting phase in, in the development of um, genetic therapies for MND-like disorders. And we did a lot of, in my research institute in Citran, we did a lot of the preclinical work in mouse models and so on, showing that that approach could work. So now it has been applied to adult ALS or motor neuron disease. And um, the first breakthrough really was related to the SOD1, SOD1 gene, which was the first gene found to cause familial ALS back in 1993. And But what we need to do with SOD1 is lower the expression of the SOD1 protein because the gene, the gene change causes a toxic gain of function. So we, we needed to lower, whereas in SMA we're raising the level of a protein it, for SOD1 MND, we need, we need to lower the level of the SOD1 protein. And again, we our laboratories in Sheffield and other labs around the world showed in cellular models and mouse models that lowering the level of the SOD1 protein was beneficial. And so, and, and also you could measure that the treatment was doing the right thing by measuring the level of the SOD1 protein. You could see it being lowered in the cerebrospinal fluid. So that all gave confidence um, that that approach might work in human beings. And so we, we used a treatment called Tofacin which um, and and first in human phase one trials, then phase two and phase three, and Tofacin, it's not it's not a, a gene therapy carried by a viral vector into the nervous system. It's what's called an ASO, an antisense oligonucleotide, that only lasts for about a month, and it has to be given via a lumbar puncture into the cerebrospinal fluid. So we did those trials. And and really very exciting results. Um, within uh, three months, we could see a lowering of the SOD1 protein in the spinal fluid. Um, and it's I've done, I think, about 25 clinical trials for MND patients. And this is the first one where patients, after a few months of, of therapy, not immediately, uh, were reporting improvements. My muscles are getting stronger. I can do things today which I couldn't do six months ago. Climbing up the garden steps, writing my Christmas cards. I couldn't do it at all last Christmas because my right hand was so weak. This year I've written all my Christmas cards. So so really exciting. Um, and obviously that Tofferson treatment following the phase three trial has been licensed um, to become available for patients in the US and also the EMA, the European Medicines 
agency have also recently approved it. We're waiting still for NICE um, to approve it in the UK. But in the meantime, it's available to patients. So Biogen have an expanded access program. So it's available um, to patients. Um, so that, that was the trailblazer. And the other really exciting thing that came out of the Tofferson trials is that there is a biomarker or a, a, a protein that you can measure that shows the treatment is working. So motor neurons are stuffed full, that their internal skeleton, if you like, is formed by neurofilament proteins. And they have a big, long axon or process coming out of the spinal cord or brainstem that might be a meter long. So they've got a lot of neurofilament proteins within them. And as the motor neurons get damaged and die, neurofilaments are released into the spinal fluid and then the blood. And we could show with Tofferson that the level of those neurofilaments came down. It decreased quite dramatically by at least 60%. Um, so that really shows that you're slowing down or preventing the damage um, to motor neurons. So not only was it a, a treatment that seemed to keep a lot of patients stable or even improving for a while. Um, but we have a biomarker or in terms of measuring neurofilaments that's going to be very useful for future clinical trials. Mm -hmm. So that was the first one. Um, there, there are now several antisense oligonucleotide trials happening. Um, so there's one for um, a rare genetic variant of um, MND caused by a change in the FUS gene. And there was a very dramatic example of a young teenager from Germany who had um, the FUS mutation. She was absolutely paralyzed, couldn't move her arms or legs. Uh, and she started to have this genetic therapy with an ASO to lower the level of fuzz. And in December, she walked onto the stage with her mum um, at the end of the International MND Symposium. So fuzz, it's quite a rare genetic variant, but the, the results are, are looking quite positive. Um, we did try two genetic therapy trials for the commonest genetic variant that can cause MND. That gene is, it's got an awkward long name, c 9 orf 72 but it accounts for about 10% of MND overall. And we've tried two ASO trials for that commoner genetic variant, and it didn't work. So um, it didn't work like it did for SOD1. So we're back to the drawing board for C9 um, ALS. And there are other trials going on um, that are involved genetic therapies, but are applicable to MND patients more broadly. So patients without a defined genetic mutation. So one of them is, again, an antisense oligonucleotide or ASO to lower the level of a protein called ataxin-2. And lowering ataxin-2 seems to get rid of the protein clumps um, protein aggregates that form in motor neurons as they're getting damaged, and they're made up of a protein called TDP43. So most MND is a TDP43 proteinopathy, and there's evidence from preclinical work that lowering the level, level of ataxin 2 helps to get rid of that those TDP43 protein clumps. So that trial is ongoing, and there's another trial aiming to, um, so in the presence of this TDP43 proteinopathy, uh, a, a protein called Stathmin2 um, gets misregulated, and Stathmin2 is very important for the health of motor neurons. It gets lowered in the presence of the, these TDP43 clumps, and there's a genetic therapy trial aiming to increase the level of that important Stathmin 2 protein. So there's a lot going on and, and there are more 
um, genetic therapies in in the preclinical space as well that that may come through in the future. So I think um, you know for such a cruel disease, um, genetic therapies are a very exciting new development, um, a real game changer, I would say.